friends welcome to another video tutorial from Shomu's biology in this video tutorial we'll be talking about extra crystallography extra crystallography is a technique for understanding the molecular and uh, physical structure of a of a crystal that crystal could be of any other molecule it could be a chemical compound any organic chemical compound including the macromolecules of our life for example proteins nucleic acid and stuff so we can identify the structure of those unknown proteins or nucleic acids for example say the dna the deoxynucleotide that dna the dna structure is determined using extra crystallography at the very early point that's going to give us an idea about how exactly whether the dna is spherical or or like spiral that's going to inspire us to find out the structure of the dna so let's look at here the overall process of extra crystallography that's what we are going to talk about today because you know I find many videos and many people understand the, all those critical formula and stuff about extra crystallography but they lack in the idea about the concept of what is crystallography in overall sense now extra crystallography is performed only to crystals why so and in this case we use only x-ray instead of any other light because we can we cannot use normal radio wavelength light the visible light that we see we need to use x-ray because we are dealing with here the molecular structures the structures in the very atomic level that is not determined that can't be determined with the visible light that's why we need to use x-ray and why we use crystal for the crystallographic process now in any molecule if you want to see you need to put it in the crystal format crystal format is normally uh, made by cooling and condensing that compound that we are trying to find the structure of now why we look at the crystal because remember normally all those molecules those organic compounds or the, all those macromolecules whatever we are talking about those molecules are not stagnant they are present in different orientation I mean uh, they are moving uh, the bonds are changing with the time it's rotating and all those things are modified from time to time because that's uh, for the living organism that's true they are changing over the time but it's very difficult for us to identify a molecule structure if all those bonds are changing rotating and modifying so the only way and the easy way to get the structure is to make that whole molecule freeze and fixed in a point that we can achieve with forming a crystal of that molecule once we make the crystal we can be sure that that molecule that we made the crystal of that is fixed that is permanent that is stagnant so now once that molecule is stagnant they have a different uh, type of atoms different type of atoms linked with that in different regions and that will be fixed throughout the experiment and from the beginning to the end of the experiment we use the same region of that the same same atoms are present in the same region of that crystal so it's very important for us it's very easy to identify that uh, the target uh, molecule structure that's the thing now for those uh, type of molecules which we cannot convert them into crystal uh, we cannot use them for extra crystallography okay so let's look at it as i told you that we can form a crystal with it and for the crystal means we are talking about 3d structure here so if I draw a 3D square like this, let's say this is a 3D square, the structure 3D. This is a crystal, for example, and there is a molecule, there is a protein molecule that we are going to look for. In the three-dimensional space, there is a protein structure over there, for example. As you see, the protein structure is a different way. It's not touching the overall crystal, but this is how the crystal looks like. Now, the idea of extra crystallography, the very basic idea is we, we put x-ray to interact with this crystal. Whenever we hit x-ray to the crystal, this crystal will diffract the part of this x-ray. Diffraction means it is very similar with the reflection. So that means it simply changed and changed the direction of the angle that the x-ray hit this crystal. So X-ray is going towards the crystal, it's interacting with the crystal and it is diffracted in a specific angle, right? Now it depends on the type of molecule that we are looking for, the diffraction pattern varies and this diffraction pattern is unique for different types of molecules. That's how we understand. If the molecule is more complex, there will be more different varieties of diffraction that we will see and if it's a simpler molecule with very less region which are most most region of the crystal if it's blank then it will give us less diffraction 
that is the whole idea we will get the data from the diffraction and that data is going to help us to find out about the structure of that molecule now let's say here as we are from the biology background we want to talk about uh, guessing and identifying a structure of a protein so let's say the protein we make a crystal of that protein so we have that protein crystal in our hand so let's say here this is a this is a protein crystal I am not drawing the geometrical shape here but the very simple idea is we are applying the x-ray through the crystal and it's getting diffracted and we also have a detector here at the end the film the extra film where we can uh, see the spot after the diffracted ray so say the diffraction one diffraction go there another one goes there another one goes there 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 so there are different diffraction so if you see this x-ray film you'll see a diffraction pattern wherever there is a x-ray hitting uh, that film you'll have a different spot that is generated in that film or plate that plate is very important to find out find about exactly what kind of protein structure that we're looking for now if i say this is not that simple in that idea because a protein is a very complex macromolecule it is filled with so many groups so many subunits and many things are attached with each other and once you're looking at a crystal as it as i told you here just look at here it's a geometrical shape this is a three-dimensional shape and the idea is x-ray will come and x-ray will be diffracted that means there should be a plane for the diffraction if you think about diffraction in overall process it means uh, it's very similar with the reflection so there is a light comes in or, or a ray comes in or wavelength comes in it hits a specific plane and reflected away that's the idea so the diffraction that we want to see here is due to different planes in that crystal okay so what we do is we take the big crystal and we break it down in smaller unit fragments so let's say we take this crystal for this whole protein we break them down in smaller fragments which are imaginary fragments by the way we we are not actually breaking the crystal here physically we are breaking it down in smaller fragments which are imaginary fragments or imaginary unit of crystals now we take each of those imaginary unit of the crystal now forget about the whole crystal and let's say we break it down in smaller fragments so one of such small fragments if we zoom in say if we zoom in here one of such smaller fragment give us a structure like this try i'm trying to draw as 3d as possible this is the smaller fragment remember this is a zoomed in portion of the small unit fragment and this unit fragment let's say here is a portion of the protein that is present here is a portion of the protein that is present here is a protein portion that is present let's say these are the fraction of the protein that come to the part of this small fragment okay let's say that so now what we do is we take this unit cell and we are trying to find out different planes in that unit cell because if we talk it about a cube because it it has uh, the structure of a cube there are three things h l k height length and so there are the three things you can easily put it there like h l k right or a b c whatever you can take it as your own because there are the three things that you will be requiring to find out the exact structure of this cube or to get a geometric idea about this cube so these are the three uh, lengths that we require for getting the idea about the cube i'm not going to talk about the mathematics here or the geometry here but the thing here is that we will try to find out different planes of each of the single unit we'll try to find out plane for example let's say we are trying to find out a plane that is present in between this area so let me let me draw it with this black color let's say this one it will be kind of hard for you to understand about this plane 
because it's it's not uh, it's not a 3D board. It's a 2D. Uh, I mean, the picture is a 2D uh, area. I can't draw a 3D area in this board. But the thing is, try to imagine this is a small cube, and you are rotating the cube in a way so that you find a specific plane. Now, in this case, we are dissecting the H, dissecting this H, this H hand to get a plane, right? So, we get a plane. So, we are placing it in a way so that we get a plane of diffraction. Now, it comes the UV, uh, sorry, now it comes the X ray. X ray is hitting to that plane and it is diffracted. Now, let us say, let me do this experiment one and again. Let me draw the different planes let me I, i'm just drawing the planes here for your understanding for example say like this this is the plane that we are talking about and let's say this is the this is the x-ray film let's draw it close here and this is the x-ray so we have a diffraction here for example now the diffraction is calculated from the distance of the center of the axis the center means the straight if there is no diffraction and uv passes by wherever it gets entered to the to the extra film that is the center and all the distance is calculated based on the distance from the center so here the first diffraction is at this point let's say this is the first diffraction from let's say the plane number 1 actually they have different number of the planes based on how we dissect the different lengths so, in this case, let us say the plane number say, say 200. From plane number 200, we get the diffraction at this specific point. Now, we do the same thing. We change the plane. So, let us say now the plane number, plane number 220. In plane number 220, we have a diffraction, let us say here. For example, so this is the second point of the diffraction. So, by this fashion, what we do, we take different planes here and we trying to find out the diffraction pattern. And not only we trying to find diffraction pattern, we need to think of two things here when we are looking at the diffraction pattern. The first thing is the angle of diffraction, and the second thing is the intensity of the spot right why because the intensity of the spot that is going to form in that extra film is directly proportional to the amount of electron present in that plane now let us assume let us say the diffraction pattern is very very bold here at this specific point for example say at this point that means the diffraction formed at this area the plane with which the diffraction formed at this area contains a very high density of electrons and very high density of electrons means there is a higher chance of finding the content or the molecule that we are looking for. So, higher density of electron means if we back there and see that plane, there must be most of the protein components present in that plane. Now, if this intensity is very faint and very low, that means there is low electron density present. Low electron density means there is a less chance of finding the fragment of a protein present in that plane get it now if you look at this cube this is a unit cube we are talking about if diffraction took place here from this specific plane what we will find huge amount of protein is present so we will find out higher intensity in that spot so high intensity it will help us to identify yes there are maximum amount of protein present or protein content present or electron density present in this area now, if there is a reflect diffraction from this spot or this specific plane, if I, if I put the plane like this and from this specific plane, that is going to give us a very faint spot. That is going to tell us that there is a less chance of finding a protein component there. So, now 
try to calculate the whole thing and going backwards we know the amount of intensity corresponding with the electron density with the help of multiple experiments scientists have acquired this idea that if you have this amount of electron density it corresponds with let's say 10000 electron if you have this amount of density it corresponds with 6000 of electron we know about the relation of number of electrons associated with the intensity level that we find in the x-ray plate. So, as we know that we are dealing with the structure of an unknown protein, we simply found out that spot based on that intensity and the angle of diffraction. I haven't talked about that yet, but based on that intensity, we can identify where or which part of that unit cell contains more electron density area which part contains less electron density area and this angle of diffraction is also important because this angle of diffraction is also different for different planes because as we are as we are changing the planes remember we are not changing the association of the protein molecule because this protein is fixed it cannot rotate the, those atoms cannot rotate it's fixed it's in crystalline form so as we are changing and altering this plane we are getting different diffraction angles so diffraction angle is also telling us an important fact about how exactly we are placing the plane so this diffraction angle will tell us about which area of the region we get the spot for so it will be important for the computer to find out which spot represents to the which area of the unit cell and the intensity will be helpful to identify the amount of electron density corresponding with that area of the unit cell. So as we know both these things together for one small unit cell and the whole data is feed into the computer. Such now go back as we divide the actual crystal into let us say three different small units we get the data about each unit for all those three units 300 units and then we compile the whole data about the 300 units which will give us an idea about the whole three dimensional cube and the different density of the electron in that cube so as far as we go with this protein we will find high electron density present throughout this type of area which is going to help us and identify and understand where exactly the protein molecules and different atoms are present. But that is not the end because it is going to give us about the idea about why, where exactly the components are present. It is not going to give us exact structure of the protein. So how can we get the exact structure? Now we correlate the data of electron density along with the appropriate structure of the protein because the protein structure is composed of its secondary structures that are alpha helix or beta sheet there could be beta turn and loop so we know again with the help of series of experiments we know that which kind of electron density map is corresponding with the alpha helix which kind of electron density map is corresponding with the beta sheet so with the help of this correspondence an idea we can find out what kind of and where exactly the alpha helix is present in this cube where exactly beta turn is present in this loop which is going to give us an overall view an idea about the protein now that is also not the end that is again a crude extract an idea now we we take advantage of the other type of computerized biotechnology tools and like like the bioinformatic tools we take the protein data bank we find the same type of protein structure we compare the structures with each other together to find out exactly where there is a difference exactly where there is a change that we fill the gap from the idea and, and informations from that database and that is not so not also the end because it's a structural part we also try to run several experiments to find out the function of this unknown protein 
Once we find the fun function, we can correlate the function with the structure to get exactly what kind of structure the protein should have to obtain that kind of a function. Because if we find out function, we can go back to get a structure. If we get the structure, it will help us to find out the function of the protein. Because there is a correlation between the structure and function of the protein. So that in a sense is extra crystallography in a nutshell about how exactly we determine the structure of the protein or any other chemical compound with the help of extra crystallography. It's based on the extra diffraction pattern. And remember, there are two things that I haven't talked about which are very important like one is Bragg's law, another one is a Fourier analysis or Fourier transformation. Both this case are mathematical explanation which I am not going to provide you and confuse you. But the idea is whenever there is a diffraction going on from the nearby area of the electrons or nearby area of the atom or the molecule that we are looking, that diffraction or the wave of the diffraction could be in two different ways. Now it could be in the same phase, let us say it is coming from two consecutive area. Of the, of the atom, so of the molecule. So, we have a in phase. So, if both of them are in phase, the total idea is constructive. So, it is called constructive interference. So, that is going to amplify this whole wavelength and it is going to give us a brighter light here, brighter spot here. Now, if it is coming from two different up to, to other uh, regions and if those, those light or rays are not in phase, they are out of phase like this one they cancel each other, we call it a destructive interference, so you get a faint band. So, it is also very important whether what kind of nearby electrons that this light is uh, or, or this uh, X-ray is scattering, X-ray is involving and scattering and due to the scattering what kind of band we are observing. But based on this band and intensity and the angle, we finally get the whole structure by extrapolating the data and also tallying the data with the experimental results, right. So, that in a sense is extra crystallography. I hope you understand the overview of extra crystallography. If you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel to get more videos like that and definitely sharing this video with your friends. Thank you.